sorry about that. <laughs> we just give the camera a little shake and it turns, literally, honestly. Um, yeah, so there you go. So I've just told you about this, this cake here. And again, like I say, any questions or if there's anything you particularly wanted to see or, you know, how did you do this one or this one, I can answer you later. But I will be doing a Facebook Live on Tuesday explaining hopefully a little bit more than today. This is just a very quick one. Give you a little taster of what you can do with it. So we'll pop that down here and then I'll go through some of the other samples I've got out. Um, let's see. Now, I've just got a few spare cupcakes here and as you can see it's you know, it's so quick and easy they can be done in one color you can paint the cases silver gold whatever color you want add different sprinkles or use decorations like they're from the little rose from the mold to decorate the cupcakes okay now i've got some cookies along here along the front this one here, um, the spots, the little dots are from a piping nozzle, I think it was number four, that I used and I just rolled our paste very, very thinly and cut out using the piping nozzle. And then I've painted the trims and everything with a Sugar and Crumbs Wonder Dust called Violet Mist, but I did add a little bit of uh, white luster to it as well to, to lighten it up a little bit. Um, because it's it's a colour I really, really love. That's it there, that one. I think it's a really pretty lilac, violet mist. But um, like I say, because I've used pastel colours, as soon as I started to paint it, I thought, I'll just lighten it a little bit. And um, that's, that's the nice light. It's like a silver lilac. I think it really stands out. Okay, and the next set. These are all cookies, by the way, all baked cookies. This one is my favourite. I love this one. Um, the cookies were just baked and then painted, sprayed with luster and then I've used our brush embroidery flowers mould and the trailing succulents for these little succulents here, okay, and the, the fern leaf off the tropical leaves and just attach them with a little bit of royal icing. I think they look really, really pretty. And I think with these, these things, I think when you're doing stuff to sell, or gifts. I think this makes a really nice little cookie set, you know, to do three in one if you're fundraising, selling, like I say, or, or making them for gifts. I think they're ideal for that sort of thing. You see a lot of these little boxes now with all little treats in, don't you? So you could do an afternoon tea treat box, which I think would be certainly appreciated. Now this one I haven't quite finished up here, but this is just to show you another way you can decorate the cookies. This is run out icing. So it's royal icing and I've piped an edge around each section and then flooded in with softened royal icing and then just painted. I've piped a little edge here and at the bottom just to give it a bit more detail and painted them again with a, that gold is very soft because I've added some white to it. And I've just put that in to show you. I haven't finished. <laughs> I haven't finished that one. It might be finished by Tuesday. Let's hope that I've finished it by Tuesday. <laughs> And then here, the other day, I just thought, I'm just going to do one all in white, just very, very plain, because a lot of tea, tea sets, and um, you know, are just plain white, aren't they? So I thought that looked really nice um, to show you how simple it can be. OK, and then we move on to the next one. This is a Christmas set. So how nice is that? That would be lovely to sell. The little sprinkles, the tree is actually on the mould, OK, on your afternoon tea mould. But these little tiny trees and berries were um, edible sprinkles from Marks and Spencers. Uh, I thought they were quite pretty, quite nice. And then I've just piped, I've sprinkled um, each cookie with luster, um, not luster, sorry, magic sparkles that have been ground finer to give the nice sparkly effect. And then just piped <coughs> tiny dots of snow onto each cookie and the stars from the mould as well. Okay, um, these cookies here, what I've done with these, these are actually just baked cookies, okay? And then I've moulded the icing from the top of the mould as thinly as I could just to attach to the top of the cookies. So I think that's another great way of doing it. And you can see from that, you know, how little the cookies spread when you bake them. You can use any recipe, just search online for a cookie recipe that doesn't spread. But we do have uh, recipes on our website as well telling you, you know, recipes and things, different ideas 
But like I say, you don't have to use oils, you can use anything you find online. Now the next thing here, we just move this in a little bit for the camera. We've just got, it's hard trying to work around the shadows and get, keep in the light. So hopefully you can see on here, it's not quite full because I've taken some off to put on these cakes, but um, you can actually mould your own custard creams, okay? Using the mould and that's just sandwiched together with buttercream. And the custard creams, there's, there's lots and lots of recipes online. Um, so we've put one on our website for you, but any, you can try any if you have a favourite one or whatever. Um, and basically it's it's more or less just replacing on, in the cookie a little bit of flour with some custard powder and the buttercream just a little bit of icing sugar comes out to, and replace it with some um, custard powder again and a little bit of vanilla essence if you want to that, I think that makes it nicer adding the vanilla essence so yeah so there you go you can do all these we've got these these are the sort of jammy dodger style biscuits and I've just left the hearts in and I've used piping gel I've just coloured a little bit of piping gel because that does actually sort of skin over so I can touch that and it's fine um, if you use jam you know it might stay a bit sticky and messy but they look really nice and you could you could do more with these as well you could add things to them or whatever okay so I've got lots of cookies here that I've baked okay there's teapots and the cups so you see they're, they're a nice easy shape to do and I'll do these on Tuesday I will add you know some decoration to them do some different things maybe do this one here we'll see which one if you put in the comments uh, which you like what you'd like me to show you I'll see what I can fit in okay so do comment and like which you know which, say which ones you like okay so I'll do um a teapot a teacup and a cake okay and maybe a rose or whatever to decorate so i've got some cornflour in a bag and just pat a teapot with some cornflour take it tap it out so there's not too much okay, now let's see i'm going to just use white paste so this is our sugar paste. If you haven't got this, certainly use anything else. Um, usually you add about a tylo, a teaspoon of tylo, sorry, CMC powder, which is a five mil spoon, to about 225 grams or eight ounces of uh, paste, knead it in. And then it will strengthen over time when you leave it to mature. Now I'm pushing that in over the handle and what I'm going to do is remove some paste from the handle um, when I've moulded the rest of the teapot. When I make the cookies, I leave, let's show you an example, I leave the paste in the handle. If you don't, the handle will burn. If you have the handle, you know, separate with a hole in the middle here, the handle will burn. So I found, I found it's better to leave that in for the cookies. But when it's the sugar paste, or modeling paste, whatever you're using, um, I like to remove the paste from the handle. So there you go, just pressing that in. I want it to be nice and flat on the back, level with the back of the mould. Take the excess off, make sure it's not going over the edge anywhere. Then I just need to turn it round to face me and then just press down really hard and you're going to build up some excess paste here. So that's fine. I can actually feel that now where that silicon is there. So we'll just start to push that up, take that out. This is very nerve wracking when you're doing it in front of people. It's always easy when you're on your own, nobody's watching. So this is the worrying bit now you think, oh no. But I'm sure it'll work. I have conf every confidence. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just cleaning up the edge there, making sure I can see the edge of that silicon here. Okay, tidy that up a little bit. Okay, and that's, oh, just moved it in that bit there. Let's take that out now. So you can see it's not going to stick in the mould. Just turn it over. 
and bend the mould and out it comes, okay? Nice and easy. So there's your teapot. Now the cup, tap out. And I just need that a little bit just to warm it up in my fingers to make it more pliable. Okay, and then, now never sort of roll a ball like this and put it in to push around the mould. Always look at your shape and flatten it out a little bit. And then pop that in, push into those corners there. And take over. Now on the instruction sheet, where is it? Oops, on the instruction sheet it does tell you the weight of paste. So you can have your scales at the side and weigh your paste so you get more or less the right amount to put in. But I do like, I do quite like having a little bit too much. To, to make sure it's gone down into that handle. Or the, other, or the other option is start to mold from that direction so you put enough paste in if, if you're weighing it beforehand. So again, the same again. Just make sure that's all level with the back, not going over the edge, and then take, start to press down and take the excess paste up. You can do this twice. You don't, you know, don't just do it if it's awkward. Don't do it once, do it twice. Take that off. It is awkward where it is as well for me because I'm, normal, I'm working sort of leaning across the board so I'm nearer to the camera. Normally I'd have it here right in front of me. So if it's taking me a little bit longer and it's an awkward angle to see, I'm sorry, it's just taken a little while there. Okay, I think that's okay. Is it? When it comes out, if there are bits of paste you can see around there, you can always use a um, Dresden tool or a ball tool to tidy it up. So I'm just going to turn it over and bend. Little flicks sometimes. If things, if you think things, they're never stuck because these moulds and this paste work perfectly together, but sometimes small things just sit there. Um, like say if you were just moulding that little rose, I'll show you that now in a minute. If you're just moulding that, you think, oh, that's not going to come out, but they do. They're really easy to come out. Now I'll do two colours in the cupcake to show you. I think that's look nice. So I'll just tap that out and put coloured paste in. So I think we'll have a lilac cupcake. Soften that paste up. The easiest way to do this is to put the top in first and then because that it's it's sort of when you look at the mould it's deeper here there's a definite line you can push into um, rather than doing this one which it's easier to overlap that at the back. So I've just softened that paste a little bit and you see I've just flattened that out, put it in, push along that line That's it, hopefully. I'm, oh, do you know what I've done? I shouldn't have used lilac, should I? The mould's lilac and the paste is lilac, so that's not good for uh, for the viewer, is it? No, I should have used a bright pink or something. There you go. So hopefully you can see there, I've just sort of sloped it down a little bit because this, this paste I'm going to put in for the cupcake case will come up slightly over. So you can see that angle. Silly me using lilac. Oh, I don't know. Right, so just use a little bit of glue or water very, very thinly up here. Don't do it down here because it might seep into the um, in between the mould and the paste that you're about to put in. So I just need that, get it smooth. I think that's probably far too much. And again, flatten out. What I like to do here is just thin that edge that I'm going to put in, okay? So you don't have to, the more you push on this, the more likely it is that the paste will move. So I'm putting that thin edge there and then I can take the excess paste off at the bottom. Okay, then take that 
to the corner and take off. Tidy it up a little bit. And that's ready to come out. So just turn the mould over and it falls out. Okay. So now we can do something to decorate them. Let's do um, little flowers, maybe. Little flowers. So I'll just put some cornflower onto them. And then a tiny bit of paste into the small rows. Take off the excess, tidy it up. So you see what I mean? That will just sit there, like the, the cupcake fell out because it was so heavy. Now that isn't stuck or anything, so you just turn it over. Oh, it did fall out. I was gonna say, if it doesn't fall out, just give the mould a little flick like that and it will come out quite easily. Okay, and then we'll do the bigger rows as well. Turn it round, take off the excess. You see people with a knife, you know, a palette knife. You can do that if you want to. But I always find it better to feel what I'm doing rather than um, with a knife. You can't really tell as much, I don't think. So, oh, we need another one, don't we? We can't leave them without. So I have another large one. But these, if these were baked cookies, you would decorate them exactly the same way with your powder colours, whatever. Okay, so there's our roses ready. So let's have, let's get the colours ready for colouring them. Um, I'll tell you what they all are in a second. I just need some paper. So we'll pop the roses on. One thing I didn't get out ready was my brushes, so just bear with me a second. I'll just try and grab each brush as I need it. I'm just going to put a little bit of colour. I've got some colour on my brush. When you use these powder colours, just dab into your lid first, then onto your paper so there's no loose powder. And then you just go into the middle of the rows, build the colour up gradually. Okay. This is plum truffle, rainbow dust plum truffle. Although that's such a dark colour, I just think it really gives nice detail. But like I say, don't use too much and use a flat dusting brush. So now we want some green. So I've got rainbow dust autumn green. I need to get another brush again. Uh, let's get a few while I'm here because I know I need a gold. Uh, I'll do for the green, okay. So again, tiny bit of colour on your brush, dab it into the lid, rub it on the paper and then I'm just going to brush each leaf with a little bit of the green. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to paint the cupcake case. I think we'll have a gold. So this is another Wonder Dust, Deep Rich Gold Luster. Okay, I'm going to use some alcohol, mix some alcohol with it. Oops, that brush has got a little bit green on, I'll just wash that off. Didn't see that. Should be okay now. And then I'm just going to paint the case gold. That does look slightly dark. But I'm going to spray with luster when I finish the cakes and the teapot, whatever. So it will go with slightly lighter. They do it. There you go. Nice colour, though. It's a very rich gold. Now I'm going to paint across there with the gold. I apologise. I'm trying to go fast so you don't get fed up. So it's not the my painting skills won't be the best doing these. Let's go inside the handle there and outside. Okay. And then the teapot. 
move it all down a little bit for you across the bottom the lid the spout yeah please accept my apologies if you can see some gaps because <laughs> I'm not turning them round or whatever if they don't look painted very well um, please excuse me okay and then the handle again yeah I think that's painted quite badly but um, I've knocked it as well there you go anyway so now I'm going to attach the flowers. Now, because everything is soft and just made, freshly made, edible glue will work. If you've got these made like the day before and the surfaces are dry, you need to use royal icing to attach, okay? So, oops a daisy, I'm gonna pop that one on there. These look like the best china, don't they? What do you think? And that one on here and then move these out of the way just pop them on there bring it down a little bit oops and then i'm going to spray use spray luster i like the spray lusters um if you go into spray though put everything you're going to spray put in a box like a big cardboard box that you can close the lid so you, you spray and then close your lid quick, <laughs> otherwise you end up with a sort of a fine mist of luster all over your kitchen or you know, wherever you're doing this. So, and it, it, rather than brushing it on, I think it gives a nice even finish. There we go, as little or as much as you want. Oh, I think that looks lovely, so nice. Okay, what do you think? I'll take them off the paper so you can see them a little bit better. Okay, so there we go. And they can be left to dry on a sponge pad before you put them on your cake. If you, you know, and if you want them to stand up, I mean, I found if I show you the, the messy back, oh, it's heavy. <laughs> I'll slide it off. I'll turn it round. If I show you the back of this. You can see it's just royal icing because they're, they're sort of solid. I mean, you could if you wanted to, just, and the base is quite flat. They did just stand up and I've sort of lent them against the sides here. Um, they didn't need any supports, you know, through like um, whatever you'd use, a piece of spaghetti or a cocktail stick or whatever. They do stand up quite well and just leave some sponge behind them until they're dry. Okay, now I'm trying to think if there's anything I've missed telling you. Um, oh, this wonderful board, by the way, is from Sugar and Crumbs. These non-stick boards are amazing. You've probably, some of you have probably already got one. I think Carol does some in different sizes and different colours. Um, and it's great for, you know, all your work. Now, that's, that's the mould. So any questions about it, just, you know, I'll try and answer later or this evening. Um... And I hope if you buy one, you enjoy using it as much as I am. I've got so many things I want to do with it in my head. But time, you know, it's always a struggle with time and everything, doing something like this, as you will all know. Um, so, yeah, I will be back with you on Tuesday. And let me know if there's anything you've seen today you'd like me to make or show you. Let me know. Um, and what day is it now? Friday. Yeah, it's only a few days away, so I'll, I'll try and think of some other designs, maybe, and see if I get time to get some more ready for you. Okay, so thank you so much for watching, and everything is available on the website with the colours and the sugar paste and everything. Thank you again. Take care. Bye.